Hi, thanks for joining me. My name is Bonnie Brzozowski and I'm a reference librarian at the Corvallis Benton County Public Library. And this is another installment of Misinformation Online, the COVID-19 edition. Um, today, I wanted to talk to you about um, numbers and statistics, as well as the nature of scientific research. Um, this kind of data um, gets reported, um, misreported frequently, or just reported in a misleading way that leads people to draw conclusions that often aren't really true or valid. Um, so it's something to watch out for, um, especially in the media. Um, so this example here, um, Americans are avoiding Corona beer amid the coronavirus outbreak survey finds. And this was reported by the New York Post and other um, outlets. And what they were publishing is information from a survey of a 737 beer drinkers, um, in which 38% said they would never, they would not drink Corona under any circumstances. But what we don't know is so the company that that, um, did the survey never released what the questions actually asked? Um, so we don't know if they if the implication is that these beer drinkers actually aren't drinking Corona because of coronavirus, or that they are just beer drinkers who do not like Corona and wouldn't drink it under any circumstances, coronavirus or not. Um, so it was it was just sort of a false um, conclusion that was made um, with a um, with that statistic um, basically. Um, Another example that I've seen circulating um, is the number of days that COVID-19 can live on surfaces. Um, there was a report that um, I think CNBC actually reported saying that um, that they that there had been um, COVID-19 traces found on a cruise ship um, that had been that had had um, patients with COVID-19 on it that had had no one on it for 17 days. So it had lived for 17 days. But what they weren't um, reporting accurately is that what was found were genetic traces of COVID-19. And um, so that those wouldn't actually infect anybody. And um, they weren't finding um, live COVID-19 that could actually cause infection. So the idea that um, that the headline phrased it as if um, it was that COVID-19 could live on surfaces for 17 days. And that's just not true. It's just a um, sort of a manipulation of, um, of, a, of a report um, and a stat to a certain extent. Um, so spotting bad statistics um, is, is important, but it's hard um, to a certain extent. Um, but I found that these three questions are really helpful. And this is from um, a talk by um, a woman named Mona Chalabi. Um, and then on, so on the resources for misinformation and news um, document, which is a um, document that has a bunch of links um, relating to ways to debunk misinformation um, and fake news um, more broadly. Um, but the very, very last link in that document um, is Mona Chalabi's talk where she talks about this. And I'm actually using um, her words to a, to a large extent. Um, but the questions that she says that you can ask yourself about statistics to help you better spot bad ones, can you see uncertainty? Um, so if you think of like political polls, for example, they're they're notoriously inaccurate. However, numbers um, in political polls are often reported with a lot of precision. So you'll see like 46.474 people are going to vote this this way. And that just that level of precision and number sort of makes it seem like, oh, this this must be fairly accurate. It just it lends it the sense of um, accuracy. Um, but like I said, they're notoriously inaccurate and um, they it's hard to get a truly diverse sample. People don't pick up their phones or are not inclined to answer pollsters. Um, people might lie to pollsters. So there's they're um, they're not they're not really reliable. However, they're being presented as such. So can you actually see the uncertainty in the data? Can you see where the statisticians are uncertain? Can you see yourself in the data? Um, not every data set must relate to you, but um, sometimes it's problematic to only see averages of everything because there can be a lot of outliers, a lot of people um, grouped far from that average. So sometimes it's more useful to look at statistics um, by, um, so for example, the unemployment rate, looking at that as an average may not be as useful as looking at the unemployment rate by education level or um, income level, or <clears throat> I'm sorry, education level or gender, for example. Um, number three, how is the data collected? Um, and this is a really important one to pay attention to. And the example um, Mona Chalabi gives is that um, 40 in 2015, a statistic was widely reported that 41% of Muslim Americans support jihad. 
Um, but what journalists ignored about that statistic is that um, they also asked in that survey what jihad meant to people. And the majority of people in the survey said it meant Muslims' personal peaceful struggle to be more religious. Only 16% defined it as holy war against non-believers. Um, and on top of that, it was just an opt-in poll that was available for anyone to take online. So anyone could have opted into it. I think it had like around 300 people that responded when there's more like 3 million or more Muslim Americans in the United States. So paying attention to that is useful or telling. The nature of scientific research, and I think it's just important to note this, that um, scientific knowledge is always tentative. Um, it's, it's something that is a slow accumulation. So every research study is really just a drop in the bucket. It might lend weight to one conclusion or another, but it's never definitive. Um, however, the press tends to report, um, it, the press tends to report sign the results of research studies, um, individual research studies as if this is now fact. So like the, like an example, like sometimes coffee is really good for you. Sometimes coffee is really bad for you. It makes it kind of seem like science is wishy-washy, but the, the deal is, is that the press is just not really um, accurately reporting, um, on scientific research. Um, just one study doesn't mean that coffee is always bad for you. And um, just because one study came to that conclusion and we need to look at like where, where is all of the research leading as a whole? And um, as fact checkers, what we're looking for is broad consensus. And um, we're not looking for what one data point says. And that's not, that's not useful. Um, and broad consensus can be hard to come by in the scientific world. So we need to keep that in mind as well too. And um, sometimes it's really just saying, well, um, a lot of the research says this, but then some of it says this, and that's that's what we know. We don't know definitively um, one thing or the other. And so that's what I wanted to talk about related to numbers and statistics and scientific research. Thanks for joining me. Um, I'm glad you've been interested in these clips. Um, please check out my next one. We're going to do some reverse image searches. Thank you so much.